good evening. You're watching Point Blank here at KTN News. The politics of Mount Kenya have never been more bleak since Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta was sworn in as the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. The civil rights icon Martin Luther King Jr. said, only when it's dark enough can you see the stars. Sir William Shakespeare wrote about the floor of heaven being littered with stars above. Is Ann Mobi Waigoro a rising star? Governor, I want to ask you this, and I'm only going to ask you point blank. Your journey began as chief minister. You were called then when you were the head of devolution because Kenyatta bestowed upon you many, many challenges. Obviously, it is historic that you are sidetracked by allegations that you have fought off and survived. And again, you refuse to die a political death. You reemerge in Kirinyaga, elected as a governor. And you sit with your sister, Charity Ngilu, with the death of Roboso as the only two elected women in Kenya. Then you sit at Capitol Hill with Baba, a sworn enemy of Waiguru before. But like Uhuru, you shook his hand. Is Anne Waiguru more cunning than I think? I don't think it's uh, anything about cunning. Here, because um, I can't say that I started uh, by planning everything. I mean, this things unfold, and that's what I keep saying that uh, we do not exist in a vacuum. Um, the political um, environment keeps shifting every day. We didn't know that we would have this conversation on BBI. Uh, no one knew that would happen in 2017 um, when we were running for office. Um, we didn't know that we would be in a place where we need to sit back and, and ask ourselves what ails this country and, and uh, support the president in his initiative with, uh, with Raila on this matter. So it's not, it's not, it's not about... Um, I can't agree with you because the late J.J. Kamodo said, when you go into politics, you must angusha a giant. Mm -hmm. So he used to say he fights Michuki because you, when Kamodo fights Michuki, he's a man. Mm -hmm. He went for Wangari uh, Karua. And he's a giant. I mean, so you, I, I think you, you portray a very um, silent self. But within you, there seems very, very careful moves. And I don't want to repeat from your wedding till you're sitting with Baba. You, you seem to be very deliberate in the things you are saying and you are doing. Because you have come out when Mount Kenya governors are quiet. Mm -hmm. it, how can it be that you are the woman among men? You know, you're the only one who came out to put your head on the chopping block in Kibra. I mean, Governor, I mean, Kenyans are watching you. You know, you know, um, you know, Tony, you can tell by the things that I do that I have uh, very little fear in me. Um, I, I work with conviction and um, I believe in what I do. And when I made the decision to support the handshake, I knew that we needed there are people who are hoodwinking out us there, out, outside there. But they know very well that, that we need this handshake, we need to move this country in this direction. I have put my neck out, but politics is about risks. It's about risks. I don't um, think uh, you get up there by sitting comfortably in your corner, waiting for somebody to come and pull you up and, and promote you. I think you, you get your statement made out there, you put your head out, you sell um, your agenda, and um, then people make the choice. Mushimio Governor, you know they will be watching Point Blank and many will say I'm here to build you. Mm. And they can say what they want. But I want to say this to you. Mm. Minor commander was in Kibra. He's a Nairobian politician. But from the entire Mount Kenya region, you were alone. Mm. There was no man. <laughs> you, you, you know, I mean, you were there yeah. when it mattered. And uh, Kenyatta has addressed Kibra twice. Mm -hmm. He actually is almost as though he's spearing his deputy. Mm -hmm. Because I know Kenyatta well, and you know he's my friend. Mm -hmm. And I know he's watching tonight. But he keeps saying, Pesa ili muangwa, sijui nini difanywa, but I was beaten. And when he's saying he was defeated, he's laughing. And Waiguru, I know you can't go against Kenyatta. So no, why are... <laughs> so no, I can't. <laughs> so, 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 you know, so that is why I'm saying, if any Kenyan, anyway, I, let, they have heard. Because something, some, something here, mm -hmm. is, something is happening. Um, Definitely. I, I think from where I come of from... Of all the political say, moves you can make, you cannot go against Kenya. No. Because that would be political suicide. Yeah. Anyway. Anyone who understands politics 
and you, you need to understand politics. You need to look at politics in the bigger picture, not the short, short term. Look at it from, from far. I mean, um, so, you, you, so you if you are the one who was there at Kibra and you can't go against Kenyatta, what, what message is that? As I've said, <laughs> you know, everybody in this country knows there's something called handshake. Can you imagine if, uh, if uh, Raila lost in, Ki in Kibra? Can you imagine for a moment? Would you be talking BBI today? Would there be BBI? What's bigger? For Jubilee to lose one seat and we keep the country and expand this space? Or is it just about us? This country is bigger than, as I've said, if you look at Kibra, every, everyone was there. Everybody was there. You saw the people who were there, and we've said it again, well, even before I was there, there were other leaders from the coast, from Eastern. You saw me and my sister on one side. We sat down and had this conversation. So, and said, yes, and said, we need to support because we need the handshake to survive. And we need the BBI. We are seeing the bigger picture. This is not just about the small contest. And as I said again, you know, that wasn't a jubilee seat even in the first place. So we weren't losing anything as such. So if we have shaken a hand, saying that let us come together and make this country more inclusive. You know, in my personal view, this is personal view, we should have done everything to ensure that the handshake survives. And that is why I was in Kibra. I was in Kibra because I have seen beyond, seen beyond this election of a constituency. I saw Kenya. I saw where we want Kenya to go. And as a leader, I chose to play my part. If I was interested in my own personal ambitions, I wouldn't have gone. Because where I come from, people weren't understanding why is it that you are going to support the opposition. It wasn't the opposition I was supporting. I was supporting the handshake, which is the future of this country. And I said it that day, and I'll say it again now. We need to have this BBI process to move forward. There are people who would have loved to have killed it. We have managed to keep it alive up to now. We must ensure that we take it to completion. The BBR is going to transform the very foundation of this country going forward. It's what is going to make us more sustainable as a democratic nation. It's, it's a step in the right direction. It's not, going, it's not perfect. It won't resolve all our problems, but it is a step in the right direction. To, rectify very many wrongs that have been there in the past. And I chose to be counted with leaders who have put Kenya first. Now, in terms of the uh, uh, time plan, because 2022 is three years from now, mm -hmm. it looks like actually this is a well thought out issue because of what I'm looking at, we are ending the year. Um, and this is the last political interview I'll do at Point Blank this year. The year is coming to an end. Do, do you see resolving the BBI, BBI issue in 2020, giving then the country time? Are you talking uh, or caucusing among yourselves about the timelines? Yes, we've caucused um, amongst many people and many leaders about the timelines. And uh, we are very hopeful that uh, this process will be completed by latest May, June completed by May-June. And that then gives the country uh, space to internalize um, where we are at and then prepare then for the next phase of this country. Because once you're done with the changes that you will require in the constitution, there will be other institutional and, and uh, legal changes, you know? And, and um, it's not just about um, passing the document. There will be laws that will need to be amended that have to go through Bunge to realign with the constitution. There will be institutions like IEBC that needs to be um, fixed. There will be other things that do not require uh, law that needs to be start implementation, like uh, the proposals that we have done on the youth empowerment. There's, there's things that we can start doing. Administrative. Uh, yeah, administratively yeah. to support the youth agenda and ensure that the money is streaming and the economy is revamped. Governor, and I'm, I'm very interested about uh, your view of this party list. Uh, it's, a, it's a change in the way politics is done. Uh, are you seeing that as a, a, a step forward in democratization, that people agree before elections? and that uh, you know what is a team that is... 
it's it's fantastic in my view, and especially as as a woman, it's fantastic. And and you see, because we have tried all other ways to ensure that we get this at least a third gender rule. Now we are guaranteed a third gender rule from the um, county assembly level all the way up without nominations, because people are complaining that we are too many. And this wage bill is burdening the Wanjiko. And so it's good that we have found a solution where we can get a quota for both genders and at the same time ensure we reduce the overall number so that the weight on Wanjiko is lessened. That is a significant milestone. And, and for me, again, as I said, the alternative gender rule at leadership level is, is, is very encouraging, especially starting at the governor's level. And we hope even at the top, when we are done with the conversation around um, the executive, there will be space for alternative gender. That will be a step in the right direction. We can't continue living the way we are, assuming that um, um, we can just say that women compete in a not very level playing field and expect that we will have women uh, elected in office. I think this is finally a solution in, in my view. Not only that, um, as I said, it's going to also ensure that you know the teams in advance. And those teams are selected uh, rationally, not emotionally, not mm -hmm. because of money. You know, um, Tony, this culture where you have to accumulate a lot of money to win a seat will, will change because it will no longer be a factor of your resources. And, and therefore, those who are out here who can make good presidents can actually come out and not necessarily be billionaires, but they can run and become president. And that's what we want. We, so I think when people hear the proposals that are being put out there, you will see Kenyans will support it because this can only help us. Look at devolution. We've been complaining. There are many functions, many functions that are still carried out at the national level, yet they're supposed to be devolved. It's going to be mandatory to devolve every single function and devolve their resources for that function to the county level according to the constitution. So, so what I'm asking you, yeah. in terms of even devolution, do the uh, Mount Kenya governors, um, first of all caucus, because I know you're very well networked at the national level and obviously as you've said you're working closely with the prime minister and the president, but at the local level in the region do Mount Kenya governors see the benefits of BBI in the sense that the uh, resources will be increased from 15% to 35%? Yes. And can you, know, can you give us a bird's eye view of whether you talk at all or is there momentum or, or not? I, I'm told that there will be a meeting with the president with Mount Kenya governors. Is this true? Yeah, we are expecting to have a meeting soon. And um, even before the meeting comes, We've already been discussing, and it, not just Mount Kenya governors, governors across the country support the increase of the allocation of resources. Because one of the challenges that we have had in devolution is that we have functions which we can't carry out because we don't have the resources. So that's one. So it's across the board. It's no, I must all, push you all, on the Mount Kenya question. Yes. Because obviously it's newsworthy. And certainly, uh, on, and on, certainly on, on, on Mount Kenya, certainly on Mount Kenya, we, we see not just the increase, but also even the proposal of the, uh, ensuring that devolved functions and the resources. One of the things that we've been complaining about, we have agriculture, which is our mainstay. Institutions here in Nairobi continuing to carry out functions that should be carried out at the county level. And if they were carried out at the county level, the Mwananchi and the Wanjiko would feel the impact because it would be more practicable, as opposed to having um, silos operating at the national level, and then it, whatever it is that they're doing doesn't trickle down to Monanchi, yet it's supposed to be a devolved function. So all governors, uh, because you know very well that in central Kenya, most of our counties are agricultural counties, most of our counties, not all, but most. Um, we, in, we will see that the issue of coffee, for example, will be resolved with this um, introduction of the BBI. We will see issue, matters to do with tea will be uh, Because Governor Kiraito Murungi said, at Bomas, to the face of the president, mm -hmm. that you're caucusing. Yes. That, that as governors, you, you need to look at this. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm saying I've heard uh, from my network yes. that, 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 that there will be a meeting. Yes. Uh, so, so my question is, are you involved in that? Is, is it happening? It, we, are, we are waiting to be called. The caucusing is happening. We are meeting every day. We are having conversations. Um, and our views also are, are 
we're, we're testing, checking, reading the document. Um, and um, yes, uh, the question of caucus, yes, we are all caucus. Is there a likelihood for a united uh, position from the governors of, of, the, of the region um, when you caucus, uh, or does it look like a push and pull? No, there's no push and pull. There is absolutely no push and pull. Now, yeah. now then moving from that, Governor, mm -hmm. in terms of Kenyatta and uh, the legacy that this can have for him, many people credit Kibaki with the 2010 constitution. Yeah. Um, many will say Kenyatta has put it all out there. Mm -hmm. there, there is the point of no return. Mm -hmm. uh, last week I was interviewing your brother, Junet mm -hmm. Mohammed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, colorful MC, mm -hmm. <laughs> should I say so? <laughs> and uh, he was saying that the train has left the station. Has Kenyatta put everything he has on BBI? Will that be the way he will be remembered? I think this is his biggest legacy. That's my view. In my opinion, this will be his le biggest legacy, to live a more united country, a more cohesive country, uh, and having expanded our democratic space, that will be his greatest legacy. That's my view. And yes, the train has left the station. Uh, as you can see, there is abs absolutely no opposition at this point. Even where we thought there would be opposition, there isn't. So we can only expect it to, the train to reach the station uh, very soon. So, Mubi Oyuru, and governor of the great county of Kirinyaga, what does 2020 hold for you, 2021, 2022? As you look uh, Christmas in the eye, <laughs> and as the new year dawns, <laughs> what do we expect from you? Right now, um, what you will expect to see, and I have said this before, you will hear me more often, you will see me more often. I will be more vocal, yeah, more vocal on that which I stand for. Um, you will see me pushing the woman agenda. It's going to be very critical for me and it's ensuring that women get their space and their voice heard across the entire uh, country, whether it's in leadership, in private sector, everywhere. That is one of the things you'll hear. You'll hear me uh, talking about national unity and the importance of peace. You will see me building alliances with leaders from across the country. Uh, you will see me talking to leaders from other, other uh, areas, from coast, from from Eastern, from Northeastern, to play my role as a leader and ensure that we are bringing our voice together to ensure that this country has a safer and secure future. That you will expect to see in the next one year. You know, you're watching Point Blank here at KTA News, and Waiguru, Governor of Kirinyaga, says she's all in. It's a pleasure to have you here you at too. KTA News. Thank you. And too. I wish you a Merry Christmas if I don't see you. Merry Christmas and to Saremia, you. And Saremia, my good friend Kamodo. I will do that. And wish him as well. I will. You're watching Thank KTA you News. <laughs>